Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for taking the time out to attend tonight's rally. I'm truly humbled to be standing on this stage addressing you tonight. Are you proud to be standing here as Singaporeans? Do you think that as a nation, we have built a democratic society based on justice and equality? Our national pledge states that we will build a democratic society based on justice and equality, regardless of race, language or religion. We proclaim that our success is based on meritocracy. Is that really true? Like many of you, I was lucky to grow up in a household where I received the care, love and support from both my parents. We were not well off, but we enjoyed the simple pleasures of running barefoot in the playground, sharing toys and treats with neighbours, and, play and schoolmates. In short, we were just being children. Raising a child is not easy in the 1970s. It has gotten even more difficult today with the rising cost of living and the pressure of our school system. To raise a child alone is indeed a daunting task. But every year, 500 babies in Singapore are given birth to by single mothers. Every year, 500 babies face uncertainty growing up in a system that provides their mothers with little support. 500 babies will grow up in a system that does not recognize their existence. Do these children have a choice? As Singaporeans, do we value every single child regardless of their background? What about these single mothers? There are many reasons why women become single mothers. Yet, we put them all in one basket and treat them as people not deserving of our resources. What about our Malay friends? Are they less Singaporean because they are born Malay? Orang Melayu bukan orang Singapura ke? Therefore, tonight, I want to speak about building inclusiveness, building a society with compassion, a society that does not discriminate against children, even if they are children of single mothers, a society that does not discriminate against singles, or singles and single mothers, a society that does not discriminate against Singaporeans because of the race in their identity card. Today, I call for Singaporeans to take a stand against such discrimination. The PAP government said that it is not pro-family to provide subsidies or housing to these non-conventional families. Today, a single working mother does not get a single cent of her taxes under either the parenthood tax rebate or the working mother's child relief schemes. They are also not eligible for grandparent caregiver relief does not care if the welfare of these children is compromised. The PAP government is more interested in discouraging single motherhood. Do single mothers choose to be single mothers? The PAP government does not care if the welfare of these children is compromised. For them, for us, the children's welfare should come first before anything else. How much of our budget will be used seriously to provide equal benefits for single mothers so that their children start out on life on the equal footing with their peers? At the recent National Day rally, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong said, we are a nation of homeowners. But the PAP also says that the public housing policy is aimed at promoting marriages. Therefore, to discourage unmarried parenthood 
a mother-child family cannot be recognised as a valid family nucleus. Where is the evidence that this policy has worked to reduce unwed motherhood? Today, a single unmarried mother is therefore not eligible to buy or rent a HDB flat with a child. Many of them have to rely on relatives to provide temporary shelter or to rent them from the open market. Proper housing will provide a nurturing environment for the child to grow up in. We are not encouraging single motherhood, but we believe that every child is important. With today's policy, the family must wait until the mother turns 35 years old to buy a HDB flat under the single scheme. How is this pro-family? The ethnic integration policy was implemented to promote racial integration and harmony. It restricts the proportion of minorities living in each block and neighbourhood. The SDP believes that the ethnic integration policy has outlived its usefulness. Under the current housing policy, it reduces the resale price of their flats. The SDP has different policies that address the issue of discrimination against certain groups of our society. The SDP housing policy ensures that singles and divorcees are not unfairly discriminated against. The housing policy aims to make housing more affordable to all segments of society so that they are not unnecessarily burdened. SDP's policy paper on addressing the concerns of the Malay community wants to abolish the ethnic integration program that restricts where ethnic minority can purchase their homes. We believe that Singaporeans, regardless of race, language or religion, can live together in peace. Do not let the PAP-led government scare you with stories of racial riots. If you believe that we can build an inclusive society and live up to our national pledge, then do not be afraid to vote for the SDP. Your vote is secret. Nobody will know whom you have voted for, not even the PAP-led government. If you stand for an inclusive Singapore, I ask you to give us the opportunity to be your voice in Parliament. So that we can speak up on issues that are important to you, the citizens of Singapore. We care about the future of this little red dot that we call home. And we care about the lives of all Singaporeans. We can have better policies by engaging in constructive debates in Parliament, by having opposition members who are competent, constructive and compassionate. We can draft policies that are more than just profit-generating machinery. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want change to happen, be that change maker. For you, have the power to make a difference. Vote for SDP for a better future. SDP, vote! Thank you.